What are the big risks near term? First of all, the U.S. has to protect shipping routes, trade routes in the Middle East, obviously to keep the dollar on top, obviously to keep global trade going. If those shipping routes get disrupted, inflation starts to spike. Supply chains are broken. You can't supply. Prices go up. The Houthis, they're disrupting the supply chains. If they can get oil to spike, which is really what they're trying to do, it starts to fund their economy because these are oil producing economies for the most part, right? It's not only going to hurt the U.S. The U.S. has to keep deficit spending. It's going to hurt the U.S. economy, but it helps their economy. We got to watch oil prices. And right now, oil is actually making a pretty big move. You can also look at maritime shipping, which is basically U.S. insurance to make sure you're protected. Insurance is spiking to protect these trade routes and these shipping routes. So if this spikes, inflation is coming back. The Fed doesn't ease as much as they want to. The market is going to correct. So if the dollar starts to spike, we're going to know something is wrong. These are supply side inflation concerns we're running into. So keep track of the dollar, oil prices, maritime shipping, the global supply chain pressure index. The other issues are going to be after we go through earnings season, we have liquidity concerns. We also have bond issuance and we also have Powell's speech. What is he going to say? We have some March concerns here, right? In March, you have liquidity risks, liquidity as in funding risks, right? These are the funding risks to the capital markets. The U.S. Treasury, so Janet Yellen, they're obviously issuing a bunch of U.S. debt in order to fund all this growth, all this deficit spending, fiscal, whatever it is, defense spending. So they're issuing bonds. When you issue more bonds, you pressure rates higher. You can look at the 10 year rate. You're going to pressure rates higher. So the question is, are they done issuing bonds? March is when they should be done. And do we get a rate run? Do we get rates start to spike going into March? And if this goes up, then your collateral goes down. Liquidity falls to some degree. And then the next liquidity issue is the bank term funding program or regional bank support, regional bank funding. Banks should be underwater, but the, the Fed created with Janet Yellen and the FDIC, the bank term funding program back in March to basically support the banking system. And that is set to end March 11th. So that's more liquidity risk. What is Janet Yellen going to do? Is she going to reinstate a new program? Is that going to set rates higher because the bond market throws a fit? Oh my God, you're going to spend more. What's going to happen there to the bank term funding program? What is Janet Yellen going to see? So she's probably going to speak a lot going forward about what they're going to actually do about that. Now, the next one is the RRP. We don't have an actual date, but that is a shadow liquidity. The RRP is basically, there's been $2 trillion in this facility at the Fed and that cash is now moving back into capital markets, supporting liquidity and it's set to run out. There's not an actual date, but once it's gone, it's it's at like 600 billion. It started at two and a half trillion. Once it's gone, there's going to be a liquidity concern. Who's going to scoop up the treasuries that Janet Yellen is printing? Who's going to scoop it up? If there's nobody there to scoop it up, rates go higher, right? So does the Fed create another lending facility, another liquidity? Who knows? Maybe they maybe they stop shaving off the balance sheet. Maybe they have to cut rates. That's why this is going to be a lot of volatility because there's so much uncertainty going into March. That's basically your risks, the geopolitical risks, the liquidity risks, and you have earnings season.